We have a lot in store for you today. We've got RB26 digitizing, map in the minefield, bronze guides installed, and valve job. Keep watching. It might be thought that you could just stick a cylinder head in the CNC machine and it just ports it for you. And that's actually farthest from the truth. The truth is there's a minefield of things that are hanging off a cylinder head that you need to use as collision geometry. So what Matt's gonna do is he's gonna run through that for us and show you exactly what happens before we digitize and before we cut so the machine knows what to look out for. So I wanna go over some of the stuff that the Centroid console actually spits out at us, how we're actually using some of this data, what we're bringing in, and how we're setting up the machine for digitize. Taking a look at the core inside of the machine, you can see our probe is coming down. It's on one of the machine grails inside of the spark plug channel. Right there, that's where we're picking up probe points to see whether the head's been decked or not. And whatever we probe, what height we get, we do it in relation to the plate, to that height. And that's going to give us an offset or a deck height uh, that I can actually measure and offset all of our tool paths to. We probe out all sides of the head. We're going to do exhaust flange, the deck, and on the inverse side, we're going to probe the intake flange as well. This is going to give us reference points for when we actually bring in all of our collision geometry and when we're setting up planes later. You can also see I got a couple points marked out. So I have a one here, there's a one on the side of this and over here. So I'm going to take the points from all these sections and I'm going to probe off this height, probably this height. And we're going to create a whole block off section of collision geometry. I'm going to do the same for this here and for this bulk of stud holes over here. Make sure that all this is programmed in the machine before we actually start digitizing so the machine knows that it's there and we don't collide with it while we're digitizing. So you can see here, we're gonna probe a single axis in the Z. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna press cycle start, and then the machine's gonna spit out a point for us. Uh, when I'm actually programming, I try to model all of the collision geometry a little bit wider. So you can see I'm actually coming in towards the base of these features here because they tend to be a little bit wider. That's just because of the draft angle. Casting, they all have draft angles. Everything needs to be able to slip out of the mold. So all these features that are protruding tend to be smaller at the top of the feature and wider at the base. So having just flipped it over, everything here should actually be fine without needing collision geometry. We got these features poking out up here, but the way the ports are, they're really short. I'm not really too worried about the tooling getting in there or needing to make any crazy movements in order to get down into the port. So I think we're actually just going to leave the intake side without collision geometry and we'll start running ports after. So we brought some stuff over in the master cam. You can see our plate, our rotary fixture off to the side. And if we come in a little closer, this is all of the containment geometry that we built out. So you can see these little points on every side of the box. These are actually the points that, that I probe and we brought those into Mastercam and we started building out geometry off of that at the specified height. So now we're going to take these bits of information, we're going to take the plate and all these collision geometries, we're going to take that, that, and that. We're going to save them out as an STL and then we're going to go bring them into the machine. 
So we got everything brought over to the console over here. You can see we brought in our plate and underneath on the back side you can see one, two, and three collision geometry areas. Then if we come in and we flip this roughly 90 degrees, you'll actually see that Now that you guys know a little bit more about the digitized setup and what's actually going on on the machine, I'm gonna go over to the computer behind me. I'm gonna spit out new tool paths for the used core that we have in here. And then we're gonna start cutting. Here is Cameron installing valve guides. Valve guides don't just go in by themselves and you actually have to heat the head up, you freeze the guide and you put them in with a lube and you also need to make sure that the guide is at the correct height. So we measure each guide, make sure that they're at the correct height. Once the guides are installed, it's time for reaming. We ream each guide to final size using a tapered reamer at the Goodson station. The tapered ensures it centers itself off the hole. No guesswork, just precision. And a lot of people have freaked out over the years seeing a drill doing this process. And I just want to tell you that that station is made for doing this. And it has been used 
as a drill. It might freak some people out, but that that is actually how it's been done for 50 something years. We're not the first people to do this and we certainly won't be the last. And it's always a proven precision piece because of a tapered reamer. Don't be afraid of the things that you don't know. This guide reamer is this side goes into the drill and then this side here is tapered. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't have a square end and this part will go into the valve guide, centering the tool into the guide and then this part cuts it. Here's an illustration of a brand new valve guide on this reamer. And as you can see that A, valve guides don't come sized from say GSE or Ferrea, you actually have to size them. A lot of people get that confused. I, I haven't understood why, but every valve has a different diameter uh, in the stem. We'll, we'll get to that in a second, but you can see how far the reamer goes through the guide before it actually starts cutting it. So it really is imperative that it centers the guide and you can't move this around. It is ready to rock and roll and just cut with that drill. And these reamers all have to do with the size of this stem. Now this stem is not the same between OEM, between Ferrea, between GSE, between Supertech. All of them have a different size stem, so we have to use different size reamers. And that is a big thing that people understand. They think they just take a guide, put it in, and it just knows what valve you're using, but in reality, you need to know the measurement of this first. And you don't check it with a caliper, you're gonna check it with a mic because you need to be within tenths. I've heard some shops that would criticize uh, some things that we are talking about here. And that one of the things is that they would use a OEM spec for the guide clearance. And I, I think we need to talk about how that the valve guide clearance should change because we're changing the material of the valve guide. We're going to go from a steel guide, which is an OEM guide, and it has a different clearance because the OEM is steel. I'm going to say that twice. And the OEM or the, the GSC guide is bronze. And the bronze guide has a natural lubricity. And that is just a fancy way of saying that it's slippery enough that we can party with a tighter tolerance. And if you use a OEM spec with a bronze guide, what's gonna happen there is the valve to guide clearance is gonna be so opened up that you're gonna wear the guide out prematurely. You guys heard of valve guides being, or bronze guides being an issue with wear? Well, there's your sign. That's because you had the wrong guys working on it. People think that a valve job is just merely getting the valve to seal. And that's rookie talk because the real thing here is that the valve job is got a huge job. And if you get this wrong, the head will not flow right. It's not going to fill the chamber right. And it's really going to change how the car makes power. And that's how Head Games does a lot of flow testing. We make sure that our valve jobs are on point. So we're going to change how the head flows, how it fills the cylinder, and also how the engine is going to make power. Horsepower is made here. All right, guys, I am sad to say that this is where this video is going to end. So now the head is ready for, we might do some flow testing uh, for camera. I'm not sure, but we definitely do flow testing on our own. We're going to flow test it. We are going to uh, set lash. We're going to put parts in it. We are going to assemble it and that's going to be maybe our next video. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if this is what you want to see. Toodles.